How's it going everyone? As you guys are abundantly aware of by now, State of Play has in fact been confirmed. This is the State of Play a lot of you guys have been waiting on. Now, I would highly, highly recommend to keep your expectations tempered for this event for a couple of reasons. But first of all, at this point, Sony has given us literally no reason to get excited for these kinds of events. I don't care what anyone says. The PlayStation Showcase, which a showcase is always going to be one step above a state of play. Showcases are supposed to be their big event of the year showcasing all of their big games. Hence the title of Showcase would suggest. That is their substitute for E3, so to speak. And it happened during that summertime that we all reminisce about with E3 if you, you know, grew up during that uh, era of gaming. This state of play, while I am cautiously optimistic for it, at the same time, it's too difficult to get too excited again because of that showcase and how terrible it was. It was straight up garbage. Um, and this state of play is going to be kicking off later today and it will be focusing on indie and third party releases please take that to heart because if you go into it expecting ghost of tsushima 2 last of us part 3 you probably will be let down have there been times in the past that you know publishers have stated that hey we're gonna focus on xyz and then they threw in a little nugget at the end yeah sure that happens and honestly i think that would be the right way for sony to play their cards going forward because you announced showcases and stuff like that you set expectations so high and then unfortunately you come up short if you did a state of play like this and then at the end of the event you're like hey we got one more surprise for you expectations are tempered and you're gonna go exceed expectations and that's just gonna create a lot of goodwill in the audience but Let's talk about it. State of Play returns tomorrow with a focus on upcoming indie and third-party releases. Coming from Sean Benson, Director, Head of Portfolio Global Third-Party Relations. Hello, everyone. I'm Sean Benson, part of the Global Third-Party Relations team here at PlayStation, and I'm excited to announce a new State of Play broadcast tomorrow, September 14th. Obviously, this was announced yesterday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. That is 5 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow's broadcast will focus on updates to previously announced games coming to PlayStation consoles from indie and PSVR 2 highlights to major upcoming titles from our third-party partners. Our latest show has some Something for everyone here at PlayStation. Our visual, is, our vision is to be the best place to play and publish great games. And because there are thousands of developers and publishers around the world constantly making great team, uh, great games, our teams has their work cut out for them. I hope you can tune in. Uh, tune in. It'll be on YouTube, Twitch, and TikTok. Whoa, TikTok is that? Is that a first? Man, yo, the talk be getting a lot of getting a lot of traction these days. I don't know how to feel about that. Nevertheless, um. Okay, so you got State of Play, focusing on third party. So what does third party mean? It's obviously uh, studios that aren't within the first party portfolio. Now, uh, Sony does have some exclusive being released from third party partners. Hell, they are publishing some third party titles that will be exclusive to PlayStation 5 or timed exclusive. However, the whole deal works out. I offer you games like Stellar Blade. That's one that it seems like a lot of people want to hear more about. Um, that was scheduled for a 2023 release for a while. It looks like that's going to get pushed to 2024. I highly doubt that you know, it's going to be dropping this year, but that game looks like a slick action title. Rise of the Ronin, coming from Tecmo Koei, that is a PlayStation published title, as is Stellar Blade, but uh, Stellar Blade's a PlayStation published game, but it's coming from uh, Shift Up, who are not owned by Sony. Um, same thing with Rise of Ronin, that game looks fantastic, and it's scheduled for a 2024 release, uh, has that samurai vibe to it, and uh, definitely one of those games that I think as we see more of, and as we get closer to the release of that game, more and more people are going to get excited for it, so hopefully... That might be a game that we could see more of. Obviously, Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake Part Two, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That is going to be probably a title we see here. On top of that, remember that that game is scheduled for an early 24 release, so... We could even hear a release date. I wouldn't be all too surprised about, you know, hearing that that game is coming out January 29th or January 31st or something like that, which begs the question, my goodness, that early 2024 period for Japanese RPGs with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, with Persona 3 Reload, with a Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, um, yeah, like, it's not even, like, a money issue at that point and a finances issues and buying those games. It's a time issue because you know FF7 Rebirth is gonna be 40 to 60 hours. You know Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is gonna be 40 to 60 and P3R is going to be 80 to 100 hours. So, like, good luck with that one in terms of your time and, uh, you know, getting your day-to-day -day activities done. But FF7 Rebirth would imagine uh, a new trailer for that and a release date. I hope that the trailer isn't, like, too unveiling because I'd like to stay in the dark with a story-driven JRPG like that. Like, I thought they did a great job with the trailer that was dropped at the uh, showcase... Uh, not the showcase, the Summer Game Fest, the... 
yeah, that event was kind of mid as well. But uh, yeah, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I thought, had a pretty interesting trailer where it got you interested in the game, but you still didn't know where the direction of the game was. I hope we see stuff like that, or maybe stuff that's primarily focused on the gameplay. Although the gameplay looks very reminiscent of the first title, just looks like it's going to be in more open environments, which is great as well. Interested to see how they're going to integrate Vincent into the game, if that is going to come in part two. Maybe it'll uh, Vincent will be utilized to sell the DLC for part two to like intermission was but we'll see how that turns out so ff7 rise of ronin stellar blade and there is also for sure i would expect to see a new hell divers 2 trailer arrowhead game studios is not owned by sony although there's been a lot of rumblings that that'll be sony's next acquisition which i like those types of smaller acquisitions i think those are the studios that you know they have an ip attached to playstation and hopefully with playstation support they can cultivate the creation of more compelling ips i've said it before but i think they uh they did hell divers 2 dirty by not making that the opening game Game of the PlayStation Showcase. I just think when you have a showcase in an event like this, it's really imperative how you open and close an event, and I don't think Helldivers 2 is this gargantuan release. Don't get it twisted, but I do believe that Helldivers 2 is a game that could use that promotional muscle that an opening of a showcase could do, and it certainly can use that promotional muscle more than a fair game that we don't know anything about, and the PlayStation audience really doesn't like live service titles, although Helldivers 2 obviously a co-op-centric game, not necessarily full-on live service, but uh, yeah, I think that game will get a release date, and I'm sure we'll see some smaller games. I'm sure we'll get a Sizzle Reel about a bunch of indies coming out. I mean, Sony and Sizzle Reel seems to be something that they always do with, like, corny music in the background. Like, that seems to be uh, a Sony go-to. But, uh, you know, those Sizzle Reels are fine. And I don't know if they're gonna do a big push for Spider-Man 2 because there is supposed to be a lot of information dropping tomorrow. I believe an embargo is dropping tomorrow, so that might be a separate thing altogether. Maybe they'll mention it that, hey, more information about Spider-Man 2 is coming tomorrow. But Sony really needs to get their 2023 uh, and more so 2024 calendar uh, loaded up with games. It's a lot of these third-party deals. I think 2024, it's going to be very obvious that their uh, Sony's main focus in 2024 is going to be your live service games. They're going to be focused on getting out your Concords of the world and your fair games of the world. We'll see how they do. I don't have a lot of optimism in regards to how those games are going to do, but we'll see. I've been wrong about things plenty of times before, but rounding out that lineup, I think, is going to be your Stellar Blades, your FF7 Rebirths, and your Rise of the Ronins of the world that they're signing these exclusivity agreements agreements with, which not crazy about, but, you know, games are games, and at least they're gonna have a portfolio of titles in 24, and who knows, maybe they're gonna surprise us, announce a game or two that we weren't expecting, and get people all excited, but that'll be happening later today, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, check it out when it does go live, but that'll do it for me, sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below, thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.